none of you guys truly understand how much better you have it compared to two and a half years ago because you don't know what you don't know. There was nothing in the CRM. It was bone dry. You guys can literally buy hundreds and hundreds of leads at the snap of the fingers. Um, <clears throat> all this telesales, doing things over the phone, that was like not a thing. It, was, it wasn't even an option. You don't know how many times I fought with people to get in the home rather than just trying to help them over the phone. And then work spots, really, all these different offices across the country. I live in Dallas, Texas, and there was no offices when I got started. That probably sounds a little weird to you because it's a major city. But the expansion and the growth and the continuous ongoing getting better and improving for the agents' lives is why we're the number one IMO in the country. And so I want to make something very, very clear that I am nothing special by any means. I've just become passionate about what I do and I've continuously strived to get better and better and better, which is something that all of you guys can do. And you should all give yourselves a pat on the back today for not only investing time, but investing money into yourself today. So be proud of yourself. Um, but really what I wanna touch on for you guys is schedule and structure. A lot of you guys are new. With the raise of hands, how many of you feel overwhelmed? Okay, so about, probably about half of you guys. There's a lot to this business, there, there, there definitely is. And without good schedule and without good structure, it's even more challenging, right? And they pretty much have laid it out there pretty easily as like a blueprint for us to be successful, but there's, they generalize things, you know, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday are run days, Friday, Saturday are run days. And to you, you just think, okay, people are just out there running eight, nine, 10 appointments. I'm sitting here with four, I'm not as good as them. But I promise you what a run day really means is a 10 to 12 hour work day. I would assume Jared would agree with me. He came into this business pretty quick and found success at a high level. And it wasn't you working six hours a day. I mean, how many hours a day do you think you were working, Jared, when you were new? 50 a day, right? So I, you got to understand that all of the people that are successful here, they're just putting more time than you. That's it. There's nothing so crazy special or so good about you know, the words that they're saying. Like They just have more appointments and they're seeing more people. It's just a people problem for most of you guys. And so what I wanna first touch on is, just sh is the scheduling that you should take when, you, when you're here with us working on a full-time level. If you're part-time, you know, cut it in half, but I'm gonna speak to our full-timers here because I, I, I imagine most of the room full-timers. So on Monday, Mondays and Thursdays, you always hear about it, it's dial day. Instead of it thinking about dial day, think about it as payday. It's the most important days of the week for you. If, you're, if your Monday is poor, your Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday is gonna be poor. If your Thursday is poor, your Friday, Saturday is gonna be very poor as well. So these two days of the week are the most important days. These are the days where you carve out the entire day. There's no doctor's appointments. If you got kids, get someone to try to arrange you know, pick up times with them, whatever it is, like you gotta protect your dial time because that's gonna lead to your results the next two upcoming days. And the reason, guys, that we say dial one day and then run the next two days, because if you dial someone on Monday, book an appointment on Saturday, you're less likely for them to remember you showing up on Saturday. There's all types of things that happen in people's lives. What you, what you say on Monday or commit to on Monday definitely may not be what you can actually do on that Saturday. So think about it that way. That's why we don't book out appointments four days or five days. We can't be upset when they're not there because life happens, things you know hit the fan, whatever. And, and life insurance specifically, unless you went through a tragic situation, it's not something that people really like to talk about. So it's real easy to forget about more or less. So on Mondays, I think it's crucial that you set yourself up for success by the way you start the morning. If you win the morning, you can win the day. If you don't win the morning, you're gonna lose the day. So what that routine looks like needs to be consistent every Monday and Thursday. Your routine, your routine on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays can be a little bit different than your Mondays and Thursdays because those are the most important days. So personally for myself, I'm not the 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. guy, I'm the 6 a.m. guy. 
but I promise you guys, I have that internal alarm clock go off every single morning where I don't even need to actually set an alarm anymore. My mind just wakes up at maybe 6.05, 6.07, but it gets up right around 6 o'clock because there was consistency behind that. When you do something for 21 days straight, it just becomes a habit. That's a fact. So if you can change up your habits the next 21 days, you'll, you'll build new habits with whatever you're trying to accomplish. So personally for myself, it's wake up at 6 a.m. and it's get, it's get to the gym by 6.15 so I can start to work my mind. Our mind is very, very powerful in this business and mindset is huge in this business. What you tell yourself a lot of times is what you, you, you live by or, or you go, you know, you're, you're literally verbally saying something and so, that's gonna be how you work it. So controlling your mind, to me, that, that is working out. That's, that's listening to something in my ears, putting some positivity through my ears. Um, and whatever you do, like do it intentional. That, that's what I would say behind that. So I go up and get to the gym, and by seven I'm back, and I'm cooking the breakfast, and I'm getting to the office by 7.30. 7.30 is when I wanna get to the office. Some people say start dialing at 7.30. I'm telling you guys, it's my schedule. I think that dialing at 7.30 has its advantages, but I'm just telling you what I do because I'm transparent in all that I do here. But if you start dialing at 7.30, this is just a, a psychology thing. Think about this. No one else is calling them at 7.30. So you can separate yourself, one, from the competition and two, from telemarketers. And that's another like, thing you guys got to understand, the psychology of our demographic of people that we're speaking to. I don't know about you guys, but how many of you guys in here raise your hand that fill out forms? Okay, so there's four of you, right? Okay, so most people don't fill out forms, but how many of you guys get a call almost every day about your student loan debt, your car's extended warranty? Like that's, that's pretty much all of us, right? So we're not, we, we're not fill, form fillers, right? But people who are filling out forms, imagine how many more phone calls they're getting about extra BS, their information getting sold here, getting calls from here and here and here. So you have to understand when you're dialing the phone that you have to separate yourself from being a telemarketer. Now I was sharing this earlier with the group, if you're struggling with getting people on the phone or maintaining people on the phone, just add this into your phone script. Hey Trey, hey Trey, this is Gage, I'm not a telemarketer, I'm actually getting back to you about the form you filled out. You saying that little word track right there, one, separate yourself from being an actual telemarketer, but you just bought yourself an extra three, four, five seconds on the phone, which if any of you guys have dialed the phone, that's an eternity. So if you can buy yourself three to four or five extra seconds by just adding that into your phone script, why would you not? But that is one thing that I think that most agents don't understand is the psychology or the demographic of people that we're, we're dealing with. We're dealing with form fillers. They fill stuff out online. And so <clears throat> going back to the scheduling, I'm at the office by 7.30 preparing to dial, having my leads printed off so that I can attack the phones. Because this business is about attacking the phones, not playing patty cake with it or thinking twice about it. And the one beautiful thing that uh, Family First Life has done is they created a partnership with Phone Burner. How many of you guys have used Phone Burner in the room? Do you like it? I love it because you actually, it gives you no time to think. Because before, I had to manually dial everything, and then when someone hung up the phone on me, it'd sting a little bit, right? You probably have all kind of felt that way, like, damn, they just hung up on me. And now you're, you know, now you're thinking twice, or there's extra five to 10 seconds that go into you dialing the next number or the next lead. With phone burner, you completely eliminate that emotion of thinking about whatever just happened, or however that just went. So if you don't have phone burner, I would highly, highly suggest you adding that to your business because it's gonna allow you to talk to more people, it's gonna be able to allow you to make more dials, and it's gonna eliminate the emotionality of dialing because you're already on to the next lead. And so <clears throat> attacking the phones from eight to noon is, is what I do. And the reason I do that is because I don't wanna dial for eight hours straight. I wanna give myself a breather. I wanna give myself an, a, a time frame where I can step away from my desk, go to the kitchen, make some food, go outside, get some fresh air, whatever it is. So then we can literally break down our, our dialing into two segments, the morning segment and the afternoon segment. Because I don't know about you guys, but it's just hard for me to dial eight hours straight. It feels like you've been there for two days straight when you, when you do that. 
So break it off into two segments, your morning segment and then your, your afternoon segment. And when you're in your morning segments, write down all the objections that you're getting. And be honest, guys, there's only like four or five. They may, may, they may be spent off two or three different ways. But by you writing down what objections you're getting, you're allowing yourself to look at what you need to work on versus, well, they all keep saying this, Rochelle. They, can't, they all keep saying this, Luke. And it's like, I get it. You can generalize all these different people into one category, but if you actually are intentional with trying to figure out how you can overcome it, in that hour break or 30 minute break, you can call your manager, you can call your vice president, you can call someone on your team and say, hey man, you know, I've dialed X amount of leads, I've uh, talk to this amount of people, I booked this amount of appointments, and these are the common objections that I'm getting. Is there any way you could help me you know, try to overcome these objections? So then you're not going all day with getting the same objection and not learning how to overcome it. So when you break it into two different segments, you can utilize that hour time to improve the afternoon session. And what you may lack in the morning, you can make up in the afternoon with activity. But I think it's super, super crucial that you guys use a dial tracker. If you don't use a dial tracker, you're not using, you're not allowing your manager or your, your, your vice president or whoever that you're working with an opportunity to see how you're dialing. And the reason it's so important is we don't know how to help you unless you start tracking that. So if we don't know how many people you actually dialed or how many dials you actually made versus the amount of contacts that you got and the amount of appointments you booked, then we don't know where to coach you up on. Now it's just you going off of, you know, maybe a one, time situation that you're categorizing as they're all saying this, if that makes sense. So if you're, if you're making, let's say you made $200 in the morning and you got three people to pick up the phone and you booked one appointment, it's not that you're not able to book appointments, it's, it's that you're not getting enough people on the, on the phone. So if you're not getting enough people on the phone, we need to change up your dial pattern, how you're attacking the leads. Something that uh, we got shared with us uh, about a month ago from John Wetmore is like, if you're not getting enough people to pick up the phone, break your leads down into quadrants of 25 or 30 leads at a time. You can do the same thing with phone burner. Just go in there, make the CSV file 25 or 30 leads, and then you can upload them, and then you attack the leads. So you dial them three times through, right? back to back to back. And if they don't pick up the phone, you just flip them over to did not contact yet, right? So the idea behind these 25 leads is you wanna get five people to answer the phone, four of them to pound sand, one of them to book an appointment. That's a realistic ratio when you're blowing somebody up that much. And then once you get through those leads, you turn them back over, now you got 20, and you do the same thing. You triple dial them, and you're trying to get, you're trying to get five people to pick up the phone, four of them to tell you to pound sand, and you book one appointment. And if you book anything more, that, that's great, but you should go in with the expectation that four of the five are gonna tell you to pound sand, they're not interested, don't call me back, the whole nine yards. But the whole goal of that is to get people to pick up the phone so then you can improve your talk time. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Because it just clicked in my head when you had this daunting list of 75 leads or 125 leads and, or 150 leads that you're down through on a dial day, it seems like a laundry list that you'll never get through. But when you break it down into 25 or 30, it gives you the ability to get people to pick up the phone and once again work on your talk time. That's what this is about. Your goal is dials and talk time. Everyone projects the, the 15, you know, 15 appointments is what you should be shooting for, but we can't always control the amount of people that pick up the phone. We can't always uh, control if they're gonna be home or if they're busy in the next two run days. But what we can control is dials. And there's power in saying, I'm gonna do this and you do it. Just like if you said, I'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the gym, you won because you told yourself that the night before and you did it. There's power in that. So the small things lead to the bigger things. What we can not control is the amount of dials that we make in a day. If you get, give yourself a drop dead goal and then a lofty goal and you, and you fall in, anywhere in between, I think that is a huge win because you told your mind that I'm gonna do this and you went out and did it. So that is something to celebrate in itself. And we get so caught up in this business watching the highlight reels of the top producers like Jared. 
and you think that, okay, if Jared's goal is to write 40 in a month, then that should be my goal too. And then we're easily disappointed because we don't understand that Jared's working 15 hours in a day. And then we get upset at ourselves because we are not hitting those goals that we really just projected onto ourselves from listening to a highlight reel. Does that all that make sense? Like run your own race. That's the biggest thing. And I see so many people get disappointed in this business because they're not doing what the highlight reel tells them they should be doing. Like if you're consistently getting better day after day, week after week, you're gonna get stronger. That should be the goal. The goal shouldn't be X amount of dollars to make. The goal is to get better and practice being perfect. What we can control is our practice. What we can't control is being perfect. So work your way up to that. To that. And so when you're on a dial day, and when you're in that, after, you know, that afternoon session now, it's so daunting to be able to be dialing at 7, 8 o'clock at night. It's the worst thing ever. How many of you guys have dialed at 7, 8 o'clock at night? It's horrible, right? Because you feel like you're playing catch up. And so that's the importance of starting at 7.30, starting at 8 o'clock, not saying, okay, I'm going to start work at 8 o'clock, and then you don't make your first dial until 8.30. You're 30 minutes behind. You're an hour behind the people that start at 7.30. And then they're going to be done at 5, 6 o'clock, and you're going to be mad at yourself because it's getting dark outside. You're thinking about dinner, and you're still dialing because you only got seven appointments. But you only can be mad at yourself. You can't be mad at the leads. You can't be mad at, at anything else but yourself. So <clears throat> when you're entering into your, your afternoon session, maybe your morning session didn't go well, it gives you a, a new shot. It's like a breath of fresh air. So, okay, all right, I'm sitting at five appointments, or my man right here is sitting at six, right? So now I'm entering into my afternoon session, and I'm going to attack the phones the same way. And so <clears throat> I'm trying to be done by 5 or 6 o'clock, guys. I'm not trying to be done on the phone until 7 or 8. So you make the choice on how long you dial by how early you start. So you determine that. Control what you can control at the end of the day. And then moving on to the next day, Tuesday and Wednesday, the run days, right? They're very generalized. We don't really know what that means. What that means is I would pack my lunch, a ham sammy with pretzels and a gallon of water at 8 a.m. and I'm gonna hit the field with my stack of leads that I have unresolved with my five appointments because that's how many I had when I first got started and I'm not gonna come home till it gets dark. That was my mindset because I knew that I needed to get better at this business because I sucked. So it's okay to suck. We all sucked at some point in time. Paul's been doing this for eight years and he said it'd be weird if he sucked after eight years. I totally agree. Like you should suck for a couple months. That It's all right to suck for a couple months. It took me four months to really get over myself, to quit talking negatively to myself. So it's okay, like it's okay to feel that way. You're, you're, you're overcoming mental barriers when you get into this business. There's all types of mental barriers that are gonna pop up. Should I dial them for the third time? Should I call him back when he hung up on me? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've called this dude 12 times today. Should I call him again? Like all these different mental barriers that we have to overcome because I know you have them because I had them and you're probably no different than me. And so when you start to look those barriers in the eyes and figure out how to get around them, under them, look, you know, bull rush right through them, success is on the other side of that. I've booked more appointments on the third dial than the first or second dial. I promise you guys that. It's really weird, but I was really hesitant for many, many dial days to hit it the third time, the, the third time, shaking. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to bother them. All these different things. I heard Sean Mike say this a couple weeks ago at a meeting. If we would just get over ourselves, we all naturally, we all naturally know that we worry about what people think about us. You know, you, you, uh, some people may be worried about, you know, what you guys think about what I'm wearing or how I look today. And once I got over that, that I don't care what you think about me because it really doesn't matter because this is my life and my own race, it started to become a lot more enjoyable. Same thing with the leads. And this is what Sean wa was um, talking about is that we're so worried about what the lead's going to say, what the lead's going to do, this and this and this and that. If we would just eliminate that from our minds and just dial the phone like everyone preaches, we'll get more success. 
So once again, it's that mental barrier of getting over what people or the leads are going to say to you. I promise you guys they can't reach through the phone and punch you in the face. They may say something mean to you, but I laugh about it. I call them back and say, like Paul says, he, he calls them back and just kind of breathes heavily in it, right? <laughs> like, like, like to me, to me, guys, and I, I'll admit this, like when someone would hang up the phone on me and, they, and I know that they filled it out, I'm calling them back to get my money's worth. I mean, I'm just going to get them frustrated because you shouldn't have filled out this form because now I paid 20 or 30 or 40 bucks for this. I'm going to get my money's worth out of it. And to me, to me, that helped me get over that. That helped me get over the fear of what the leads are going to say or what they're going to do. Like, I'm just going to call them back no matter what. Call them back. What? Well, he just, he just cussed me out. Call them back. Like, just do it. Why not? What, what's, gonna, what's the worst going to happen? You're going you're gonna to hear him get even madder over the phone? Like, that's free entertainment for me. That's going to get me laughing to move on to the next lead. And once I started approaching the leads that way, I was fearless on calling them right back. I was fearless on uh, dialing them a third time in a row. So what a run day looked like for me was a committed day of work. Not four appointments, I'm going to go take, do this in the middle of the day or go do that you know, in the evening time. Like It was 8 to 8 o'clock for me. It was going to be really weird for me to come home before Michaela got home when she was working a corporate job at 5 o'clock. So that was my number one goal. I'm not going to ever be home when she gets home. So at least it looks like I'm working, you know what I mean? But, but what it really allowed me to do was allow me to door knock. Door knock led me to where I am today. So if you have any of these hesitations in your mind, what door knock allowed me to do is it allowed me to get uncomfortable, because it's not comfortable walking up to a stranger's door, your heart's beating, your hands are sweaty, you don't know what they're gonna say. There's a beware of the dog or no trespassing sign, so your heart's beating even faster. But when you're in the uncomfort zone is when you grow the most. If you guys understand that, you should look forward to opportunities when you're uncomfortable. Like Paul asked me today, you know, when was the last, what was the last thing that made you nervous? I said, this podcast that we're doing right now. Like, I always get nervous. My hands are sweaty right now with you guys. I know my hands are always going to be sweaty when I'm speaking in front of people. I'll never be able to change that. I've just got comfortable being uncomfortable. So what door knocking allowed me to do is work on my communication skills. A lot of you guys may struggle on the phones with people hanging up on you. That's not allowing you to get better at communicating. What will allow you to get better at communicating is a two-minute conversation, a five-minute conversation, a 10-minute conversation at the door. Because one, now you're a human, and two, people are actually a lot nicer in person. The person who's cussing you out over the phone is probably going to offer you a piece of pie out the door after you helped them with their life insurance. So, like, don't generalize these people off of a phone call. So many times people hung up the phone cussing me out, and I showed up at their house, and they're actually really nice. I was like, okay, I'm understanding this. They're getting bombarded with phone calls. I actually took the time to get out there and show them that I'm a human being and I actually care about their family. And even if they told me no, I at least got to have a conversation back and forth, which allowed me to increase my communication skills. And this is a communication business. So door knocking saved my business and allows me to speak with you guys today. So don't think you're too big or too small to do the little things that matter. If you're not getting the results you want over the phone, you can make up with the activity in the field. I promise you guys, there's no better way to sell life insurance than in person. We're doing all these telesale things, virtual sales, all these different approaches of doing things over the phone. But if you're new and you want to do that, know you're going to have to buy more leads. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to dial the phone longer because you're going to have to learn how to overcome those objections when the, all they have to do is hit the red button and then you're dead in the water. So if you're new, I highly suggest for you to get out in the field and to protect families in the field because you're going to be able to get two or three no's in the home and still be sitting at the table. Whereas if you do it over the phone, it's the red button and you're dead in the water, number blocked, and, and, and you're like, man, I almost had them. But if you were in the home, you could actually overcome some objections, so then you know how to overcome those objections on the phone. Does that all make sense to you guys? Okay, cool. So I just made a conscious decision on run days that I was going to go out in the field and work. Th that's it. That's what a run day looked like to me. I was going to be out all day. I eliminated all these different distractions in my life. I, I love Sports Center and I'm a sports fanatic. 
but I understood quickly that I could make the type of money these athletes are making. So why would I waste my time watching them do their craft when I could spend that time mastering my craft? And so I gave that up. I gave up listening to music in the car. The reason why the field was so effective for me at the beginning is because it was car university for me. It was podcast after podcast, training after training. It was phone call after phone call in between those down times. I couldn't tell you the amount of times I dialed in alleys, parking lots, on the side of the street just to keep working, to keep getting better. This is just a repetition type of business. So as far as scheduling goes, that's what Tuesday and Wednesday would look like for me when I was new. And it sounds like a lot of you guys are new, and that's all duplicatable actions that you all can take. It's just a choice that you guys have to make. And so utilize that windshield time with the different podcasts. And then Thursday, it's the same thing. We're starting to write back over. And when my business changed, guys, is when I got out of my apartment and I started going to the office. There wasn't an office when I first got started, so I didn't have that luxury. You know what is, you know what sucks really, really bad? Can anybody guess? Dialing the phone alone. Because it's like, man, uh, 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 man, uh, 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 all these different things can pop up in your mind. But when you're here and you see this guy get hung up on and then this guy's dialing the phone and this guy's in his intro, what do you want to do? You want to keep dialing the phone. So be in an environment, immerse yourself into an environment where you can get better every single week. I started looking forward to going to the office because I could get around Rob Richmond. I could get around Jesse Parley. And these dudes were Hall of Fame producers. So why would I not try to get myself into that circle? I earned his respect in time by showing up every single Monday and Thursday. I actually really enjoyed it because they weren't a part of my group. And that's what the best part about Family First Life is, is we're all on Sean Mike's team. It doesn't matter who brought you in, what brand you're under, it doesn't matter. We're all under the Family First Life umbrella. And so I look forward to those Mondays and Thursdays because I didn't communicate with those guys. I didn't see those guys in Slack. And so it was an opportunity for me to not only get better and to hear their word tracks, but to pick their brain apart. And you will earn someone's respect by consistently showing up. I promise you that. Because where most people will sell themselves short is if they have a bad week or a bad month, they quit showing up. I promise you I'm only here today because I didn't quit. I quit all my life, guys, I promise you. Quit sports, quit school, the whole nine yards. But I made a decision that I will not quit this business. And if you make that same decision, you can't fail here. You just gotta keep showing up. You gotta keep showing up Monday, Thursday. You gotta keep listening to the calls. There's literally four to five calls a week for you to get better. And there's some of you guys who are like, is there a recording for it? Acting like you're gonna listen to it. You're not even gonna to listen to it. So why don't just make it as a can't miss opportunity to grow? They're consistently putting these out there for you to get better and you're making a choice by not listening into it. You're making a choice by not plugging into it. You're making a choice not to get better. Like we're, getting, we're giving all these tools and resources and trainings for you to get better and you're literally choosing not to because you're independent. Like there's no difference between me and you. I just didn't quit. I made decisions that I was gonna get better every single week. And, I, and I, you, I leveraged, I would say that's the best word, leveraged the resources and tools that are provided to us. This is a leveraging business. You don't need to know anything. This is a copycat business, to be quite honest with you guys. And so as far as structure goes, you need to structure your, your, your work and whatever your, your life is. And what I mean by that is that if you have a birthday party coming up, if you have a family vacation coming up, that means you need to plan accordingly with the proper structure. If you know you're going to, to Cancun in two months, you probably need to prepare so then you don't take a step back because you're never, you're never staying the same. You're either going back or you're going forward. It's a lot easier to always go forward than to go back and then take another step just to go back where you were and then take another step to get forward. You're literally one step behind. So having the structure of your life and your business, and you're gonna be very unbalanced. I get, you know, how do you balance work life? There is no balance when you first start this business. 
It's literally very uncomfortable. It's very unbalanced. You're learning a skill set to print you money. That's how you should look at this. Like how, how unbalanced would you go to know that you learn a skill set that will last you forever? Like how, un, how long would you stay unbalanced? But a month or two in, it's just like, man, this is a lot, this is a lot. Well, you can go back to building someone else's dreams or you can be unbalanced and build your own dreams. Because that's what this is, that I promise you. But having the proper structure in this business and scheduling will take you to the next level, will take you to where you wanna go. And then surrounding yourself with others that wanna get you to that level. My business changed when I got out the office and I quit only talking to Jordan Lowry. I love Jordan, he's an awesome dude, high energy, but the dude didn't sell life insurance at a high level. So how was I gonna be able to sell life insurance at a high level if he never did? And so I realized that I was only getting his perspective. I realized I was only getting his opinion. And then all of a sudden I started getting Rob's perspective. I started getting his opinion. All of a sudden I started getting Jesse's perspective. I started getting his opinion. And I was getting three to four different perspectives and opinions and then making it my own. And so you're, if you're only communicating with the person who brought you in this business, you're only gonna be as good as that person who brought you in this business. And there's a lot of good people who are bringing people in the business, but they only have one perspective. Get multiple perspectives, because what someone says about door knocking here may not resonate, but how he talks about door knocking does resonate for you. So that would be my key point to you guys, is find two people as your running mates, your competitors, people who you are trying to push and pull you up to where you wanna go. And then find two mentors in this business that aren't the person that brought you in this business. You need another perspective on someone succeeding at a high level. You need another opinion on someone uh, you know, selling at a high level. So find four people to put in your network that you're talking to on a weekly basis. Your two running mates, your two competitors are your accountability partners. Hey man, call me out if I'm not doing what it takes. That, you know, when I got in this business, I had, had this agent that used to literally, we held each other accountable. She's like, Gage, it's 7.30, why aren't you door knocking? Like that pushed me. But most people don't get that extra push, especially coming from someone who's in the same, you know, level with them as far as producing or trying to get to where they wanna go. That accountability buddy goes a lot, very, very far in this business. And then find two mentors. There's so many people out here who have aspirations of growing a big team, they just don't have the agents to pour into. So you're never bothering somebody. I used to always think like, man, they're busy. You know, I hear it all the time now. You're busy, man, I just didn't wanna bother you. You know I do this 24 seven. I do run an agency with 150 agents. You do know that, right? Like, I do this all the time. I have enough time for you, no matter what, if you're putting the effort and the work. Like you're not gonna just, I'm not gonna take a phone call if you're not actually applying the things that we're, we're telling you to do. But what I'm getting after with this guys is if you get over that mental barrier of saying they're too busy or they don't know me, I promise you on the other side, they'll get back to you. And then you start to build up your network of people here. And then all of a sudden you can call up Brandon Kitchens and say, hey man, I had this happen to me, you know, what would you have done differently? Or what are you doing that's, that got your agency doing so well? And you get these different people in these different parts of Family First Life that are literally your partner now because you reached out to them for help. Like be humble enough to ask for help. And on the other side of that barrier of you telling yourself that they're too busy is success in the perspectives and the ideas for you to take your, your business to the next level. So I hope you guys learned something today. Um, I got my man Paul Seguin coming up to talk about recruiting today. But I promise you, if you apply these different things I'm telling you, you can take your business to the next level because I'm nothing special and I just kept showing up and I kept being vulnerable and asking for help. So I hope you guys uh, have a wonderful day.